Well, Terry, if there was a book about the 1989 Oakland A's season, I'm pretty sure we all know what the final chapter would be. We know what the last couple pages would look like. Where does that book start, though? What's the first chapter? I think, for me, um, one of the things that sticks out in, in, in my mind is going to spring training in 89 and knowing that our team was basically set. I think we had like one middle relief spot, you know, going into spring training that, that we had to fill. And the thing that is significant about that or important to me about that is that the, the team, uh, the attitude of, of the team was, was bitter, uh, you know, that we did not win, you know, the 88 World Series. Now, I don't want to take anything away from the Dodgers. They, they, they beat us, you know, um, and we had that taste in our mouth. And it was kind of like, I mean, like the first day of spring training, I, th- there didn't seem to be or Tony didn't have to do a lot of, let's say, motivating or goal setting or, or stuff like that. I mean, kind of in a nutshell, it was just like we had a great year in 88. We made it to the World Series. That was fine. We lost. That stunk. We got something to prove that as players, we felt that we didn't quite do an 88 and something that we definitely wanted to do in 89. Seems like it was all laid out on the table for you, exactly what you're capable of, who you are, and and what you wanted to do. Once you guys got to the World Series and you saw the environments of the Coliseum and of Candlestick Park, what, what do you remember about just those games and the atmosphere and the Bay Area during those times. I want to preface that a little bit that, you know, we felt confident, um, not overconfident, but we felt confident uh, going against the Giants. And, you know, in 89, you know, in, in Arizona, the Cactus League, there weren't a lot of teams down there. So we played the Giants a lot that year. We played them a lot in spring training and we played them a lot. Uh, then we had the Bay Bridge series. And I believe, you know, again, we were roughly around you know, 19 and 0, 18 and 1 against them, counting spring training games, counting the Bay, Bay Bridge series and everything. So uh, when we found out we were playing them, we were, you know, we, we were familiar with them. You know, you know, it's a great way to put it. Sure. And we were also familiar with obviously our park, you know, the Coliseum, but we were also familiar with Candlestick. You know, we, we had played there, you know, uh, with with the Bay Bridge series. So uh, with that, there, there, there wasn't a lot of, uh, uh, surprises, you know, as far as the ballparks go, and even as far as the fans go, um, you know, there, there's no secret the love loss between <laughs> you know Giants fans and A's fans. So we kind of knew what to expect going in there. And and with that being said, uh, you know, having been there in '88, that was our first experience with uh, World Series press and media and protocol and all the stuff that you had to do. Again, we were very familiar. So going into '89. I think as a team, and, and I can speak individually, we knew how to deal with that more, meaning that you can say no you know, to some of the media requests uh, per a World Series you know, game sure. as compared to 88. We might have felt, oh, this is, you know, you're kind of obligated to do this. Let's do it and, and all that. So we just had more experience going into 89 with the, with the whole concept of World Series play. Wasn't your first time in the spotlight, uh, definitely in 89. Um, if if there was an alternate universe and there was a way that the Giants, big underdogs, obviously, in the World Series, if they were to twist this around and find some way to beat you guys, what would it have taken for San Francisco to have won that World Series? <laughs> well, the, the, the one thing that sticks out in my mind, they, they were a great hitting team. I mean, they were, you know, well built as, as well. And the one thing that they would have had to figure out was how to hit the forkball. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, Dave Stewart, game one, a good forkball pitcher, uh, power pitcher. Uh, Mike Moore, game two, again, for, forkball guy, power pitcher. Then, you know, because of the earthquake, then you go to game three, Mike or Dave Stewart again, and then Mike Moore uh, get game four. And for whatever reason, that particular series, um, they they had a hard time adapting to that particular pitch. So to answer that question, they would have had a – figure out how to get to those two pitchers, you know, to be able to uh, put some significant runs on the board. For all the things that we think we know about the 89 Oakland Athletics, from you living through it in, in, in real life, on the inside, are there some things that we don't know that we should know or, or maybe that we don't have right about our thoughts on that team? 
Wow. <laughs> That's a great, great question. <laughs> um, I mean, so much has been said about the team and, and, and written about the team. Uh, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just gonna, the, the thing that sticks out in my mind, you know, about that team was, uh, the determination that came from on top, uh, you know, Tony La Russa basically saying, you know, his major concern was, I, I really care what happens between the lines once that game starts. That's where he said he was kind of in control, meaning mm -hmm. that I expect these things to happen. Now, what happens off the field? Uh, who hangs out with who? Who who goes where? Who who does what? You know, um, as long as you're not embarrassing the ball club, he really didn't you know seem to care. But it was we we had a a, a very set goal with that particular team. I mean, there wasn't a lot of, uh, you know, rah, rah motivation. Come on guys, let's pick it up. Let's go. We got to do this. Don't do that. I mean, the, the, the players were, uh, uh, very experienced and, and again, be, be, you know, because of that 88 were very determined that, you know, once we got on the field, we knew what we had to do and, 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 and the players did it. And it was, uh, uh, you know, happened early in my career, but it's something that, you know, playing my whole career out that, that it was, that was a particular team that was something special, you know, about that team that, uh, you know, all, all 25 guys, you know, were, were, uh, committed to, to, to winning. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, have ragged on, on, on Tony, but the, the one thing I'm going to compliment him on, all he wanted to do was win and he wanted to surround uh, himself and us players, you know, our teammates, guys who had that same mentality about, hey, we got to do whatever it takes to win. Last thing for you here, Terry, and a, a catcher's question specifically. You know, the Oakland A's in that era, known for the Bash brothers, Jose and Mark, and and obviously, uh, you know, even Ricky getting on base and Carney hitting yeah. the two hole, and just a lot of offense, right? Not to mention Dave Henderson, Dave Parker, and so on. But I think maybe what is not remembered enough or or put on the forefront enough is the pitching that you guys had so maybe give me from the catching perspective what it was like to uh work with a dave stewart or a bob welch uh, or a mike moore or a rick honeycutt or a dennis eckersley out of the bullpen <laughs> it's a great feeling and um it's it, it i can only e express it to the sense that when you talk about uh players that played against us and, uh, you know, their attitude was like, holy cow, you know, if, <laughs> if, if we get to the sixth inning and we're, we're, we're behind, yeah. you know, you know for, forget it. We had, you know, Honeycutt, the specialty left-handed guy. We had Gene Nelson, you know, the power pitching right-handed guy. And once we got to Eck, I mean, forget it, you know, the game's over. And, and the determination of our starting staff, you know, the ones you mentioned, Dave Seward, Mike Moore, Bobby Welch, Storm Davis. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know, guys that that were maybe three or four or fifth uh, starters on our team ended up going to be number one uh, uh, starters, you know, on other teams. So it was fun. I, I mean, as a catcher, uh, you know, the, the weapons that we had to work with, you know, uh, uh, you know, especially for me catching Stu and Mike Moore exclusively that year um the 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 tools that they had you know there there was so much that that they had the ability to do from from hard in to that great splitty to 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 the breaking ball mike more specifically with with the slider um it it, it was fun it, it gave us a like i said a lot a lot of uh, uh tools to work with and a hundred percent put us put us in in uh, a definite advantage and you know talking to again other other teams it, it was amazing you know how they didn't want to play us you know what i mean like even a regular season game oh no the a's are coming to town you know and, and they knew you know with the the offense that we had number one but number two the the pitching that we had that it wasn't going to be a fun series for a lot of teams